that the screen, the QuickBooks that we're gonna be using is this QuickBooks. It's the QuickBooks online version. This is what we're teaching with. Now, those of you that don't have that, if you, you just move to QBO from desktop, good, Judy. All right, see how I can see, when you chat, I can see you immediately, okay? And I can answer your questions, okay? Uh, let's see. Um, oh, and somebody doesn't need it, but they don't see a CC button, Aretha, so I'm not sure where they would go to find that. Um, now, if you have the desktop version of QuickBooks, which kind of looks like this, um, I'm trying to dial in so you can see it. But anyway, that's the that we're not learning that today. That we're, you can download into the on uh, into the desktop version, but that's not what we are tackling today. Uh, the way that you do it is very similar, and the techniques are very similar. So I encourage you, if you have the desktop version, stay on the line. But um, we are not learning using the desktop version. We are learning using the online edition. All right. Now, uh, I'm still waiting for the desktop version to pop up. Just uh, for the heck of it, if you have the desktop version, put something in the chat. I want to see how many people came with the desktop version. Put it in the chat. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, we've got a good. It looks like we have a wow. We still got people. It looks like we've got about 25 or 30 of you that are in the desktop. So I'm going to do a free webinar sometime next year for downloading into the desktop version. You go into the banking bank feeds, and this is where you do it. And I will walk through that in a separate webinar. All right. But um, Karen says they're going to desktop January 1st. That's unusual. Most people are going to online edition. But anyway. So I'm going to, I'll keep this open in case we have time at the end, but this is what we're going to be learning. We're going to be learning the desktop version. And uh, let me go to the little uh, slides that I have here. All right. By the way, Aretha, I don't know when this was taken, but this is really cool. It's a beautiful picture. And I don't remember that from before, but yeah. all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, now, I am, if you don't know me, I'm a CPA who specializes in nonprofit organizations. I have an accounting firm in Atlanta. We do, between our audits, our um, uh, bookkeeping clients, our 990s, our consulting jobs, and um, the tech support agreements, all with nonprofits. We serve hundreds of nonprofits a year, okay? In addition to that, I own a company called QuickBooks Made Easy for nonprofits. And you can get to it from our website, very easy. You just go to quickbooksmadeeasy.com. And I'm showing you that because we do have a couple of webinars coming up and I'll tell you more about them later, um, but they're in this little webinar section, but I'll tell you more about them later. Uh, let's go back here. Now, um, we have, in addition to myself, we have Paige Hudson Garcia in the background. Uh, Barbara can't make it today, but both Paige and Barbara help with our consulting projects and our tech supports. Uh, so Paige, you want to unmute yourself and say hello, because I know there's a number of people here that already have tech support with us. So go ahead and say hello, Paige. Hello. It's so nice to see so many friendly names here. Got to cool. Be cool. Cool. All right. So... Um, I'm going to just move on and in. Let's get to what we're covering. Uh, one thing I do want to tell you um, is that I know that you can't sit for an hour and a half without moving or doing something. So even though this is an hour and a half webinar, we're going to break in like 40 minutes. OK, so we're going to break halfway through so that you can chill out, go to the bathroom, answer your email, because I'm hoping that because you know you'll have a break, that during these 40 minutes, you will not do anything except watch this screen and listen to me, all right? Because downloading transactions is a very cool feature um, that if you know how to do it right, you're, what can take hours ends up taking minutes. And if you know don't know how to do it, then you will screw your books up so bad that you can't even imagine how to fix them, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do, I do have one poll question here. And I want to know what your level of experience is in downloading transactions. So these are the choices. I've never done it before. I've set it up, but I'm not using it yet. I've been using it a bit, 
but I've screwed things up, okay? I use it well, but I have some questions. I know it really well, but I'm just hoping to get some extra tips, okay? So I'm waiting for those answers to come in. We've got 177 people on the call. Um, and uh, yes, you will be getting a recording of this, by the way. So you don't have to ask that question. Yes, you will be getting a recording of this webinar, okay? But that doesn't mean you can leave because this way you can answer questions. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll now and show you that 94 of you have never used it before. That's exciting. 12 more, set it up, but haven't uh, started uh, using it yet. So that's like 100 of you, over 100. Uh, brand new to this situation. We have 11 that are hoping for tips. So those of you that have been using it for a while, I still think you're going to learn. So pay attention. And if there's something that I miss, a nice tip that you want to give somebody else, please do. All right. We'll have time for questions throughout. And again, we're breaking in about 40 minutes. Okay. So um, I am ready to start teaching provided that you are ready to start learning. So I'm very interactive here. Um, uh, so I want to hear from people. Tell me to start teaching. I'm not going to start teaching until I hear something in the chat that says to start teaching because um, I like to feel, okay, thank you. All right, here we go. So the agenda, we are going to be covering first how to establish the connection between your bank and Quickity books, okay? It's by the use of this little feature in here called bank feeds. Let me get to it. Bank feeds. And to get to it, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. Some people go to banking and they just click banking and it takes you to the bank feeds. Other people get to it over here. But we'll do that in a, in a, in a second because I'm going to walk you through how to set up your account, okay? Then we're going to show you specifically how get transactions get downloaded. And then after they're downloaded, you point them to what expense account they need to go to and what program and possibly what grant. Um, and we're going to do this first. Well, it says we're going to start with a credit card, but we're actually going to start with the bank. We're going to do it for a credit card. We're going to do charges and credits and payments. And we're also going to do it for a bank. And we're going to do it for debits. We're going to do it for checks. We're going to do it for drafts. We're going to do it for deposits. So it's really exciting to me because usually I teach a little bit about downloading as part of like a big, my big three-day webinar series, but I'm never really able to focus on it and get into the nuts and bolts of it. And now I'm going to really be able to do that here. So I'm excited about it. Um, and then we're probably going to go through most of this before we take the break. And then when we come back from the break, we're going to focus on the rules feature, which is something that makes it a lot easier. And you'll see what I mean later. OK, we say we have questions at the end, but we're going to do questions throughout. OK, if your question is short, put it in the chat. I will be able to read it and I'll answer the question on the fly. If it's a longer question, Paige is answering the Q&A in the background and she'll be able to do that. Uh, we already have a question. Is the ability to do bill, pay bill or online banking required before you can connect this feature? No, you can connect the feature for free. It's easy. Um, uh, now you do have to have a username and a password to your bank. So I guess in that sense, you have to have an online banking set up with your bank. Okay. Uh, disappointed because the advertising said both for online and desktop. Dory, that was, that was fixed weeks ago. That's actually not the case, but my apology anyway. Um, let's see. Does linking with Amazon work the same way? Absolutely not. Okay, this is bank accounts and credit cards. Okay, all right. So let's move on. Okay, first of all, this is pretty quick. Why download? Well, for one, it's going to make you very happy. The reason why is because it's great if you have debit cards or credit cards, first of all, because rather than entering all those individual debits and credit charges, you can enter them. You don't have to enter them. They just come down and they come down immediately so that every day when you open up QuickBooks, you'll see all of the debit and credit card things that have occurred and, and drafts that have occurred from the day before. So that's much better 
than waiting till the end of the month when you get a bank statement or a credit card statement and then you're stuck trying to figure out how to enter this stuff and a month a month ago you're trying to ask people what things were for and they can't remember okay so this is much better you get real time balances because now your quickbooks has everything you know if you have a credit card or a debit card that gets charged and no one tells you about it you don't find out until you get the bank statement well You'll find out immediately if you're downloading transactions, okay? All right. Uh, and then it makes the bank recs quick. And I'm going to say why it makes the bank recs quick, quick and then I'm going to show you um, at some point today, and it's going to blow your mind. Basically, any transaction that came from a download will automatically be checked off when you do your bank rec. So you still have to do a bank rec in QuickBooks but it takes literally five seconds to do a bank rec, even if there's 2000 transactions for the month, because everything came in from the download, it's already pre-checked, it's wonderful. Now, things you do need to watch out for, um, let me see, uh, let's see. Uh, Tim's saying some banks require a manual step to get the data. I've not encountered any, maybe very small banks would. Um, but with the online edition, it almost is always. So uh, it's C. Wallinger. Can you set up daily automatic downloads? There, it automatically gets downloaded every day, every every hour. And you can. It's it's not something you set up. It just automatically happens. Okay. Now, one thing you need to watch out for. Okay. What to watch out for before you do this? Number one. Well, let me just. Wrong suggested account. You see, when you download a transaction, it's going to suggest the expense account that it should go to. And that may not be the correct account. So you'll want to make sure before you actually push a button to add it into QuickBooks for real, you want to make sure that it's pointing to the right account. Okay. And that should also let you know something. When you download a transaction, it's not in QuickBooks yet. It goes into a holding tank, or I call it a waiting room. And then from there, you push a button to add it. And when you push that button to add it, that's when you point it to the appropriate expense account, okay? All right, so, but you do need to make sure, because QuickBooks is gonna try and guess what the expense account should be. And what a lot of people do when they're first using the downloads, they get all excited because they see all these transactions and they just push add, 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 and it adds them all and they're in the wrong accounts. The other thing is double entry. If you have manually entered a transaction into QuickBooks, when you try and download, it'll download transactions. And if the transaction is already in QuickBooks, the download should recognize it and allow you to match it. Sometimes it doesn't and people add it over again. And then you end up with two transactions that represent really one transaction. That's something you got to watch out for. And again, we're going to get into the details, okay? The other thing about it is that some people go, well, I am going to download everything. I'm not going to enter one single solitary transaction. The only thing I'm going to do is download. Well, if that's the case, then you can only get cash basis books, if you want to know what your receivables and payables are, then you can't do that. You'll have to enter an invoice manually to customers and you'll have to enter your bills manually to vendors. Okay. Now, later on, you can point the transactions from the download to those bills and to those invoices, but I do not recommend relying on the download for every single solitary transaction in life, okay? And we'll get to which ones I think you should and which ones you shouldn't in a minute, okay? Um, one example is deposits. If you rely on bank feeds and downloading for everything, then if I get a check in the mail and I go to the bank and I deposit it and the bank never, it never hits my bank account, well, if I never entered it in QuickBooks, then I'll have no record that I made that deposit. The bank won't be showing me because it won't be in the download. And I'll never find out that my deposits didn't clear. So as you'll see in a minute, I'd recommend that you do enter your income manually. Okay. Um, now, 
we're going to talk about some exceptions to that, but I do think you should still. So I guess what I'm saying is not great for everything, great for debits and credit cards. Okay. So that's why downloading. Okay. What else do we have here? Let me move on to my next little slide. So definitely you should try this. I'm going to take this sweater off. I wanted to wear it, but it's just too hot in here. It's a beautiful day out here in Atlanta, where I'm from. Anyway, definitely you should do this, but you need to be careful that you do it right. Okay. Now, before we go any further, I need to teach something. So everybody listen to me. Okay. Tyler, even if you don't use debit or credit cards, I still think it's a good idea because you have drafts that come in and also it makes sure that you didn't miss anything or that the bank didn't miss anything and you can find out every day and it makes your bank recs much easier. So I still think you should do it, okay? All right, now I want you to stop what you're doing and I want you to look very carefully at the screen unless you're already looking at the screen because what I'm about to say is really important, okay? A lot of people get freaked out about downloading. And the reason why they get freaked out is because of the following. They think that when you link your bank to QuickBooks, that the transactions from your bank are going to go directly into QuickBooks and show on your financial statements immediately. And accountants and bookkeepers, people like us, if we're good at our jobs, we tend to be control freaks. And we don't want anybody just automatically adding stuff into our Quickity books. And so people don't download because they're freaking out, okay? Now, that is bull. That's not what's happening. That's not what's happening, okay? So that's not what's happening. When you do bank feeds, what's happening is the bank is putting transactions not directly into your financial statements in QuickBooks, not into your register in QuickBooks, but into a waiting room in QuickBooks, a waiting room in QuickBooks, all right? And then from there, you add the transactions into your financial statements. That's what's happening, okay? So my point to you right away is when we're done with this webinar, and again, we're taking a break in about 20 minutes, and then we're going to start again. But when we're done with this webinar, I want you to set up your download and download some transactions. You can delete them from the download if you want immediately. You can turn it back off again. It's not a problem. Do not be scared to play with this feature, okay? All right, so let's move on. Um, that's a picture of what the waiting room looks like. Actually, let's go into QuickBooks. So when you download transactions, they go into a waiting room. And so whenever you want to, every day, every hour, you go into the waiting room and you can go there by either clicking banking and banking, or you can click over here. You see this thing that says there's 17 transactions to review and 212 transactions. That means there's transactions sitting in that waiting room, okay? And if you click this, it'll take you to the waiting room, okay? And again, you could instead go here and go to banking and go here and go to the waiting room. And here's all the transactions for this bank account here. And then I, I connected an Amex and here's all the transactions in the waiting room here, okay? So, all right. Now what I wanna do is I want to go back to the dashboard and we're gonna do this from the beginning. I wanna show you how to connect your accounts. What kind of accounts can QuickBooks connect to? Primarily, it's going to be bank accounts and credit card accounts, including American Express, all right? So how many transactions can stay on hold in the waiting room? Innumerable ones, thousands. Tamara, I hope you don't keep them there, though. I hope that you put them uh, where they need to go, okay? So um, do you also connect PayPal? PayPal is a mess, all right? I don't usually connect to PayPal. And I can tell you why, because the way that it comes in, it, it, it doesn't let me tell it what income account to point it to. Uh, and so it's messy. So I don't connect PayPal. I'm actually going to have a webinar on using PayPal with QBO um, early next year. All right. All right. So here we go. So 
first thing I want to do is teach you how to connect your account, because I know a lot of you haven't done it before. So I'm going to do it for a bank account, okay? You see this thing that says connect accounts? I'm going to click here. Everybody ready? I'm going to click. There we go. Now, the first thing it wants me to do is it wants me to pick the account. Now, I had, I had connected my Amex account earlier today, which is why this has popped up, but I'm just going to click connect to a different account. This is probably what you're going to see. Now, um, it works with almost all banks, okay? In fact, you guys in the chat, give me the name of some weird bank. Give me, give me, give me the name of some weird bank, and I want to see if it's in here. Somebody type in the chat, TD Bank. I'm just going to pick that one, TD Bank. There it is, TD Bank right there. Bar Harbor Bank and Trust. Oh, my God, I was at Bar Harbor earlier this year. Bar Harbor. Bar Harbor Bank and Trust. There it is. Keys Federal. That'll be the last one I do. Keys Federal. Keys Federal Credit Union. I hope that's it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do one for Wells Fargo. So I just type Wells Fargo. There it is. And I'm going to click Connect. Now, the way that the next screens pop up varies depending upon what bank you have. Now, the first thing they want is my username and password. Now, listen carefully. They want the username and password that you have when you sign on to Wells Fargo Bank yourself, okay? So if you're sitting there going, Greg, my ED won't let me have access to my online banking, so I don't have the username and password. Well, you need to go to the ED and say, I need the username and password in order to make this work. And if you won't give it to me, then I don't understand why you trust me with your checkbook because you won't let me be in online banking. That doesn't make sense. All right. Anyway, so I'll click sign on. And then it's now talking to Wells Fargo. Now, Wells Fargo wants to verify that I am who I am. So I'm going to click continue. I'm going to give them my cell phone and I'm going to sell them to send me a text message. I mean, I love doing this because I'm doing it live. So now I've just gotten my text message, 871-621. Okay, perfect. Um, okay. All right. So now it gives me all of my accounts. Um, I will click continue and read the terms and conditions. No one ever does that. And click connect. Okay. Now, nothing's been connected yet. All right. But what it is doing is it's going to pull up all of my accounts, and then it's going to give me the opportunity connect to connect accounts. So like some of these accounts have already been connected, but like uh, this account right here, this account's not been connected. So I'm going to click it. And then it's going to let me choose which bank account to connect it to. Now, a lot of people automatically push add new. That would be wrong and stupid because you already have a bank account in here. So you want to connect it to an existing bank account. I'll click this. And then down here at the bottom, it's asking, they're going to pull transactions from 1-1 one, one forward. Now, you may say to me, Greg, I don't want that. Fine, you can change this. And again, this is just for the initial download. I can say, just do it for this month. Just do it for the year. Do it for all of last year. Some people like to do that. I'm going to click custom. And I'm going to say, do it from July 1, 2021 forward. Now, you might be saying to me, Greg, I already have entered all those transactions. And I don't want things to be double entered. Don't worry because you can match them to existing transactions and then it won't double add them. It'll just kind of link what's been downloaded to the transaction that's already entered, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click connect. So the first time you do this, it downloads based on that date. Ever after, it's gonna download from the last time it downloaded. And it's just gonna keep downloading new transactions every day, okay? So uh, it's in the process of, now people freak out here. Oh my God, it's gonna screw it with QuickBooks. No, it's not. No, it's not. All it does is put them in the holding tank, okay? So here it is, it downloaded 226 transactions. It's kind of a lot of them. And now 
Anytime I want to, I can click on here. It takes me to the holding tank or the waiting room. And if I want to update it, you click this little update button, it'll update and it updates all of the accounts and it sees if there's any new transactions. So you can update every five seconds if you want to, okay? Again, these are not in QuickBooks. Do not freak out. They're not in QuickBooks. They're sitting in the holding tank, all right? Is there a reason to go back that far in time in actual practice to have to connect all those pre-existing transactions? No, not if they're already entered in your bank accounts reconciled, Mike. When I see people doing this, these are the people that are like, uh, I actually have not done my books in a year and a half. And uh, so maybe what I'll do is just download everything. That's when that happens, Mike. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see. Now, there are 226 transactions here. And, and um, we'll talk, actually, you know what, let me go back. I'm going to go back to my little slide here. This is what I want you to think about, okay? I want you to think about this holding tank as a toilet, okay? It's a toilet. And every day you go into QuickBooks and you go into your toilet and you see there's new transactions and you get rid of them. The idea is to flush the toilet, okay? To get everything out of the toilet, okay? Now, how are you going to flush the toilet, okay? Well, there's th one of three things you're gonna do, okay? Either you are going to point the transactions and add them to your QuickBooks file, these are transactions that you have not entered ahead of time, and you're going to enter them as part of your download, okay? Who, what types of transactions should those be? Debit card transactions, credit card transactions, and drafts, okay? All of those things, and the reason why I want you to enter them is because they appear on the bank statement at the moment that the transaction occurred. If I buy something on a credit card, then if I bought it today on December the 2nd, it will appear in the download dated December the 2nd, and I can enter it in December the 2nd. So the date is good, okay? What is a draft? Ron, it would be like an ACH draft, or maybe your payroll uh, uh, gets drafted, or maybe um, your bank charges get drafted, uh, those kinds of things. Maybe you have an auto draft for a bill that comes out once a month. Ron, do you understand what I mean? All right, cool. All right, and George, what if we're being forced to switch from old financial software to QBO? Is it best to download all transactions from a given point? You pick a point and go forward and pick a point that's that you've not really entered transactions for yet. I, I would probably go back one month is probably what I do. I think maybe draft isn't a common term in Canadian banking. Oh, okay. What do y'all call those things that are taken out automatically in Canada? All right. So anyway, some things though, I do think that you should enter manually and those things you'll want to match to existing transactions. Okay. So Either you add them, or if it's a check or a deposit, you match them. Why do you think I would do a deposit? Well, I told you that because if you didn't and you just relied on the download, then if the bank never deposited the money, you would never know. So that's why it's important to take these fingers and manually do your deposits. Okay, now there's multiple ways of doing that, and we'll point that out in a second, but I do think you should do that. Now put in the chat, why do you think that we should do it for checks? Why do you think that we should manually enter our checks? Anybody have an idea? Why would you, why don't you just rely on the download? Well, someone may not cash the check for a while, so there might be a delay, okay? The other thing is we can match, but what if you're gonna print your checks? What if you're gonna print your checks? You'd have to enter them in QuickBooks. You know what I'm saying? 
And so, no, Carol, you can point it before you enter it. The reason why I want you to enter your checks ahead of time is because unlike debits and credits or drafts or whatever Canada calls them, checks, they may not clear for a while. So if you don't enter a check and you just wait for it to clear, if it clears three months from now, then your expense is in the wrong month. It needs to be in the month that it made it. Yes, enter, and Barb is saying, enter the date the check was written, not the date cleared, okay? So those of you that are young and love to just go out and party and you don't feel like entering anything and you're just relying on the downloads, stop it. Not when it comes to checks. You need to enter those, especially if you're printing. It's the only way to do it. Same thing with deposits, okay? All right. Now, um, the other thing that you might do is delete from the download. You can delete, they call it exclude, transactions that they're already in your QuickBooks file, but for whatever reason, you can't get QuickBooks to recognize them and match them. And that happens sometimes, okay? It's a mystery as to why it happens, but sometimes it happens, okay? And in that case, I just remove them from the download, okay? So, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to go right to this one that I just created with 226 transactions. And I'm going to tell you, theoretically, every one of these transactions should either already be in QuickBooks, and then you can match it, or not in QuickBooks, and then you can add it. All right? Um, online bill pay, Carol, again, I would say if you entered a bill ahead of time, then it would be in the right period. But if this is, so like if you got the bill on the 5th and you paid it on the 20th, then you probably want to enter a bill for that. And then you can match the payment for the bill, okay? All right, so um, back to what I was talking about. So I have 226 transactions here. And obviously every one of them should either already be in QuickBooks or um, isn't in QuickBooks and I can add it. Well, if it's already in QuickBooks, but for whatever reason, it doesn't recognize it as a match, then what am I going to do with all these things? So this is what I do. I'll say, you know what? This is all dates. I'm going to say everything that happened from the beginning of time. So I'll just 01, 01, 01 through, we'll say um, uh, 10, 31, 21 through last month, apply. So now the only thing that appears here are the transactions that happened before November. And so I'm going to say, you know what? I'm not going to worry about matching. I know these transactions are already in here. I already did the October. So I'm going to click this to highlight them all. And I'm going to click exclude. Now it only excludes them one page at a time. So I got to click the next page and I got to exclude. This went from 176 to 126. I'll click the next one, exclude. This is what you might do, the dude that was changing from another software, if you downloaded too many transactions and you don't want to deal with the matching situation, okay? Um, and then I will, that's it. So now there's 30 transactions here and I will reset this. And so now I only have the November transactions here, okay? So that's how you can exclude stuff. So we got a few more minutes before we take our break. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a checking account here, this checking account right here. I've already, I've already uh, downloaded transactions. There's 17 of them, all right? And so now we're going to walk through how to handle these transactions. But I'm going to go back to my slide because what I want you to do is every day, I want you to go to the waiting room and I want you to see what's there. It's a toilet and I want you to flush the toilet. Every day, you're gonna either match transactions that are already in there, or you're going to point and add transactions which are debit, credits, and drafts, all right? So I'm gonna go back over here. So I'm in my toilet. Here's the 17 right here. So I'm going to begin, um, begin entering transactions. So the first thing I want to do is something easy. Uh, let's look at this third one here. This is $3. This is a fee. Now, it's suggesting that it goes to dues and subscriptions, okay? This is actually like a direct deposit fee. 
and I don't want it to go to dues and subscriptions, to me, this is really accounting. So I'm going to switch it to accounting. Now, in order to make any changes here, can you make the screen larger? It is hard to read. Okay, let me do this. All right. Now, um, I'm going to suggest what you do uh, to make the screen easier to read is to change the view so that it covers your entire screen because I can't really enter stuff while I'm doing that. Okay, while I have it um, uh, blown up. Thanks, I already did that. So Anne, I'm not sure what to do. I'll just keep trying to zoom in for you. Okay, I'll just keep zooming in for you. But anyway, so what people do is they get all excited and they go add, 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 add. That's when people get in trouble, okay? So this is $3, it's a draft. I'm gonna click once anywhere in here, anywhere in here, and it's gonna open up what's called the tray. And the tray gives you the flexibility of where to point it, okay? <laughs> Aretha, yeah. So that's where it gives you the flexibility of where to point it, okay? Now I'm gonna actually, just to kind of, I just wanna show you something here. If you had entered it manually, you would have gone to this expense tab and you would have filled out the payee here. You would have put the expense account here in the category. You would have put the class here, okay? And if it was for a grant, you would have put the grant here. Because it's downloaded, it looks different, but it's the same information. So here we're putting Intuit as the vendor. And I got to add them on the fly here. Then I don't think it's dues and subscriptions. I think that it should go to accounting fees. So I'm going to put it to accounting. Okay. And then hopefully, you know, if you've taken other webinars for me that you use the class to break things out by program, admin, or fundraising. So here is the guidance center. Um, no, actually, this goes to admin. If it was paid for out of a grant, I'd put it there, but it's not. Okay. And now I'm going to click add. But before I click add, I want to show you something. Uh, I'm going to go to the, um, I think I'm going to go to the uh, bank account because I want you to see what's going to happen. So right now, let me go into the register here. Right now, the bank account is 481,823.65. Okay. I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to click add. Now, this is $3. I'm going to click add. I'm going to go back up here. And now I'm going to refresh this window. And it's going to go from 823.65. It's going to go to 820.65 because the $3 has been entered. OK? And if I go back over here, you will see now I had 17 transactions. Now I only have 16. So basically, I'm flushing the toilet. All right. Now I want you to notice something else. There are also other transactions to Intuit. And I want you to see that what it's done is it's changed what its guess is. It's smart. So now, and these, this is unrelated to rules. Okay. This is just something that QuickBooks does to try and help us. It's now suggesting accounting for these others. Now it'd be nice if I could see them all together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the description and people get confused. They think the description is something that is related to the name of the vendor. Frequently it is, but in QuickBooks, the name of the vendor is the payee. This description ends up on the memo field when you add the transaction. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click this so that it's now in alphabetical order by clicking the top column. And now all four of these Intuits are together. Now, I can't, I can't see whether the class has been pointed, okay? But if I click on one of these and open it up, look, it was smart. It added it to the class as well, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and check off each four of these, one, a two, a, a three, a, a four, and I'm going to click accept. And now we're down from 16 down to 12. And look what it's wanting to do. It's saying, you know what? I want to create a rule 
to where any time a transaction um, has um, Intuit in the in the description, I'm going to make it go to the Intuit payee, and I'm going to point it to the admin class, and I'm going to point it to professional fee and accounting. Now, I want to stop right now. You're going to see this on your computer screen. Do not click create rule. Do not do that. And here's why. You see this thing here that says auto add? This is on. If this is set, what happens is when the transactions come from Intuit, it'll not only suggest that they go to professional fees and class, it'll also add it into your QuickBooks file automatically, which means you can't even look at it before it gets added. I don't like that answer. In other words, it skips over the waiting room. I want it in the waiting room so that I can at least look at it because sometimes Intuit charges us for things that shouldn't go to accounting, all right? And so what I'm gonna do, I could either uncheck this and then create the rule, or I could create it manually on my own later on, okay? And that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna exit out of here, okay? All right, so now we're down to 12, okay? So let's see what we've done here because I wanna make sure that I cover everything and we're almost ready for um, a break. Uh, so let's see, I've done my little fee here. Okay, so let's add a draft for, um, let's see, a mortgage payment, okay? Let's see where that is. So there it is. You see this one right down here, Regions Mortgage 1723. This is a mortgage payment that we have, 1723. Notice how it assumes it's rent, okay? It, it's not rent. This is a mortgage payment. So you want to repoint that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it to open up the tray. And then we have the ability to create um, Regions Bank, okay? And I will add that to my vendor list. A lot of times you will already have it in your vendor list. If you, in this case, you've probably been paying Regions Bank your mortgage for a while. Um, and then uh, mortgage payable, that probably would have already been there as well for you, but I'm just gonna add it on the fly. And I'm gonna click add. We're almost ready for our break, almost ready. Long-term liability, I'm gonna create that. And then, uh, I'm going to say, now this is one where, well, we will, we'll worry about that after the break. I'm going to click admin and then I'm going to click add. Okay. So now we're down to 11. All right. So um, let's see. All right. The next thing that we have is, let me do the regions mortgage. Ah, another draft that occurs is payroll. All right, so this one down here, and let me zoom in for the person who can't see, 802358. This is from QuickBooks Payroll, okay? So here it is, and it's trying to download it, and it's suggesting Jews and dues and subscriptions, which is insane, all right? So I want to change that. Now, this one is one where you would want to split the transactions, right? So, and, and Mary Ellen, I'm gonna show you how to split. I'm gonna do it with payroll. So I'm gonna click here and you tell me, Mary Ellen, how do you think you would split? Do you see anything that would tell you how to split it? Look at this computer screen, Mary Ellen, and you can put it in the chat. Okay, now anybody, just tell me. Did anybody see something on your computer? There, there's a split button right down there. This is how you can split transactions. Okay, now payroll is something that gets pretty complicated. Okay, so it'd be like salaries and wages and uh, whoops, didn't do that. Um, so salaries and wages, you, you know, put the amount by class, the amount that goes to the guidance center of this is 3,200. And of course, this you'd put in as gross and then you'd put salaries and wages again. And then you would put, we'll say, I mean, this could be split 20 different ways. I mean, it could be 30, 40 different ways. Uh, this is a synergy conference and this is 82, 8,500. And you put this in at gross and then you see this add a line here. 
we click add a line, and then we put the payroll taxes in and on and on and on. It's a, it's a huge entry that you end up making. But so what I suggest when it comes to your payroll entry, what I do instead is I add it manually. So I have a journal entry that I do whenever the payroll runs. Let me go into my memorized transactions. And I'm just going to pull this up on the screen. There we go. And here's the entry that you would make. I assume you understand what I'm talking about. If you have an outside payroll company, you definitely are making this entry. So here's the entry. So I'm going to go ahead and click save and close to enter this. And as a result, when you go into the bank feeds, and we'll just go back into the bank feeds, I'm going to go to the dashboard, and I'm going to go here, you will see that, look, it's found a match. It's matched it. Okay, so what this is going to do is when I click match, it's not going to enter it in QuickBooks. It's already in QuickBooks. It's simply going to link it to the journal entry that's already in QuickBooks. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click match. But you know what? Before I click match, see we're at 481.020. Okay, let me refresh that to make sure that that doesn't change. Yeah, it did because we entered some stuff. Okay. 472061. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click match. And then I'm going to go back over here and it still says, let me refresh again, it still says 472061. Okay. What happened is when you look at the journal entry, I have to get back to where the transaction is. Let me see if I can get there relatively quickly. Um, let me go back here. Uh, let's see, previous. Um, where is that transaction that I entered? On 11.30. There it is right here. Um, this is the transaction that I clicked on. I'm going to click here, and I'm going to edit the transactions. And when you look at it, I want you to look up at the top. What it did was it detached that transaction. See, it just attached the downloaded transaction. It didn't add, just attached it, okay? As a matter of fact, if you click on this, it'll show you, and you can actually unmatch it if you want to. Sometimes you'll need to do that if you want to make a change to this transaction. It'll make you unmatch it, okay? So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish that. So that's the payroll transaction. And uh, let's see what else we have. All right, and, uh, so... Another thing that you probably didn't enter ahead of time, but that you um, certainly can um, enter with the draft. Let me go back to my downloaded transactions. Here we are. Is interest. If you have a savings account, you get interest income. And look, it's suggesting that it goes to interest expense, but it's actually interest income. So I'm going to click this. I'm going to move this to interest income uh, right there. And I'm going to put it to the admin class, and then I'm going to add it, okay? And now we're down to nine, okay? So what we've done uh, is we've entered a draft for the fees. We've entered payroll um, drafts. Uh, we've entered drafts that come out. We haven't entered checks yet. Now, checks, you would probably want to match. And QuickBooks matches based on the check number and the date and the dollar amount, okay? So you can see here that here's check 6502, there it is, and it found a match, okay? So I can click on this and you can click, it tells you what it is. You can even go over to the check. I'll go over to the check. Here's a check that I wrote, okay? And I entered it ahead of time. There it is. Notice how there's nothing up here at the top. It's not linked to any downloaded transaction. Now I'm going to click match, and now it's going to be linked, okay? So now we're down to eight, all right? Uh, let's see. So what else do we have here? Um, all right, I'm trying to see what else we need to get. Uh, all right, I'm just going to, here we are. This is something. If 
you like to enter your bills ahead of time. And not everybody does this, but if you want to enter your bills ahead of time, then you can actually enter a bill into QuickBooks. And by that, I mean, you go to here and you click the enter bills screen and you enter a bill. And then when you pay it, let's say you go online to pay the bill, you can link the payment directly to the bill without ever entering the payment, okay? So I'm gonna go over here to, and you'll see here that it even recognized it. It's linking this payment. This is a Blue Cross Blue Shield payment that comes directly out of our bank account, but we like to enter the bill ahead of time. So we entered the bill, it found the match. And let me go ahead and click this. I'm gonna click on the bill here. Here's the bill right there, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and match it. So this is interesting because unlike when you matched the um, check, because the check was already entered, here we're matching a payment to the bill. So we actually are adding the transaction. Instead of manually going here and clicking pay bill, we're going to let the download do that for us. Okay. So we're matching to the bill. I'm going to click match. And now it's matched. And now we're down to seven. So when it comes to expenses, you can either add them. You can match them to an expense that's a draft or something. Or you can match them to a bill if you entered it as a bill. All right? OK. Now, uh, what else is there that we need to do? Uh, getting close to the end here. Um, all right. Uh, this is just AT&T. It was put to uncategorized expense. A lot of times QuickBooks doesn't know where to put stuff. It suggests uncategorized expense. Again, this is a huge problem people do. They click add when they shouldn't. So I'm going to go ahead and click it. And I'm going to change it to probably telephone. All right. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just put this to admin, although some people split it between program admin and fundraising, and now click add, all right? And now we're down to six, okay? So uh, let's see. Here's another problem. Look at this. Wells Fargo Consumer, this is an auto loan payment, and it was put against accounts payable was a suggestion. Never, ever be doing this. You should never add something if it suggests accounts payable. So I got to click on this and I'll have to move this to something else. Um, oh, somebody wanted to know about how to split between interest and principal. So this is a loan. So conceivably we could split between interest and principal here. Okay. So I'm just going to put the whole thing to interest because I don't feel like uh, I would rather give y'all a break and y'all kind of understand what's going on here. So uh, I'm going to Let's see, I think that's it. Oh, the amount is two thirty eight ninety five. All right, accept. All right, cool. All right. So um, at this point, I think it's time to take a break. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little clock on here and give you a five minute break. And when you come back from the break, let's see if this is five minutes. Guys, I am back. We're starting in fifteen seconds or ten seconds. Uh, Diane is very concerned that I'm going to rush through the credit card section. I promise you, Diane, I will not rush. Um, we have plenty of time. Now, um, I would like you guys to put in the chat one word about how you're feeling at this moment, okay? I like to understand how people feel. Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you excited? Are you nervous? Are you anxious? Are you scared? Are you constipated? Um, do you have pain? Um, where are you in your emotional spaces? That's really important. Oh, oh somebody is a little constipated. Good for you. Um, uh, some people are tired. So Vanessa, hi, Vanessa. I love Vanessa. Uh, Vanessa's confused about the deposits. We haven't gotten to the deposits yet, but we're about to. All right. So let me go ahead and i um, going to go back in here. We're going to cover the deposits. All right. Patricia's ready to roll. All right. So listen very carefully to me. As I said in my slide, I would like you to enter 
deposits or at least enter your income, all right? Because if you don't and it never makes it into the bank, you'll never know about it. So I do want you to enter your deposits, but you don't necessarily have to enter the actual deposit itself. Let me explain, okay? You could, but you don't necessarily have to. Is there anybody in here that invoices customers? Invoices customers. You fill out this invoice, put it in the chat. Who invoices customers? Who invoices customers? All right. So if you do invoice customers, you will be very excited because you may invoice a customer and you don't have to record anything else. QuickBooks will point a, a downloaded deposit directly to an invoice or multiple invoices. Let me show you, okay? So, um, all right. You see how there is a deposit here. Let me zoom in. There's a deposit here for $17,500, all right? And it suggests that it goes to this generic income account called services. But you know that this actually are payments against two invoices that you did to customers, okay? So what you can do is you can enter the invoices. When the payments come, don't enter the payments and then just catch it from the download and point it at that time. So let me show you, okay? You see this 17, I'm gonna click it. Now you'll see you have something that says categorize. That's what you do if you wanna add it or match. I want to find match. So I'm going to click it and it's going to give me a list of transactions that have occurred that relate to deposits. There's invoices, there's sales receipts, there's actual deposits. And so you'll find here is my invoice. This one from David Bowie and I check it off. And this one from Parker and Faith Ashford, and I checked that off. And now it matches. You'll see 17,500 here, 17,500 here. The difference is zero. So what I'm going to do when I save this, it's going to lower the invoices and create the deposit. It's going to do all that. So the only thing I had to do was enter the invoice. Everything else I didn't have to enter. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead, and before I do this, I just want to show you, I'm going to pull up a balance sheet. Let me just pull up a balance sheet. So I want you to see how this is going to happen. So uh, right now, here's the bank, and here's grants receivable, okay? So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to save this thing. So now we're down to four transactions. I'll go back over here. I'm going to refresh the window. And now the receivables account is going to go down and the checking account is going to go up. Okay. How did you know that was the correct invoices? Well, you'll need to know about deposits. So in order to point deposits to invoices, you'll need to know. So hopefully you have a record of when somebody makes a deposit or when a deposit occurs through your uh, portal. Okay. Uh, let's go on. But yeah, you'll have to, you'll have to know that. Okay, so what, what, what do we have left? Um, what if there's a credit card fee? What if there's a credit card fee? Uh, let's see. We've got here. Uh, where is this? Oh, wow. Why am I not seeing that anymore? I wonder if I just accidentally add it. That's interesting. All right. So here's a deposit. I'm going to have to just do this on the fly. Somehow it didn't hit right. So you see this, 600, this this $648? Let's say that that's made up of a $700 deposit. I'm sorry, a $700 invoice, but there was a fee. Okay. So let me go ahead and add the, I got to add an invoice for $700. So conceivably you would have added an invoice. It's here for, just put this uh, membership dues and we'll make it $700 and put it to the guidance center and we'll back this up to the beginning. Okay, cool. And then we'll save it. Okay. 
So here is 648. I'm going to click it. I'm going to click find match. Here's my $700. But yet the charge, I'm going to put $700 here. And that leaves a difference of $52. And that is the fee, the credit card fee. So I'm going to go ahead and click this resolve button right here. See, all we're basically doing is trying to point this deposit to invoices. But in this case, the deposit is less because of the fee. So I'm going to click resolve right here. And it adds a window down here to where I can put the fee in. So um, I have an expense account called merchant fees. Hey, I'll just go ahead and add it. And it's an expense account. Okay. And then I'll put this as a minus, minus 52. So that now their difference is zero. Everything matches. The deposit 648 is made up of a plus 700, which is going to lower the invoice and a minus $52, which is the fee, which is going to go to an expense account. So I'm going to go ahead and save and close that. Okay. So that takes care of if there's a credit card fee. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to, here's another one. I'm not sure what happened to that. But anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and click this one. And this one, we would probably want to find a match. And let's see if we can find a match. So we'll say it is this one and this one, but there's only a $5 fee. So I'll resolve the difference. And we're gonna put this to merchant fee and $5, okay? Uh, make it a minus five, sorry about that. And save, cool. All right. Now, this was one where we actually entered the deposit itself. And so I'm just going to match that. So that works out perfectly. This last one is a credit card payment, which we're going to talk about in a second, because I want to go over to credit cards. Okay. So that basically, actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and talk about it now, because I want to add this. So this is a payment on a credit card. So we actually have the credit card set up already. And if you'll notice, when credit cards, when you make a payment on a credit card and you've got both the bank account and the credit card account linked through bank feeds, the transaction is going to come down twice, okay? When I go to the checking account, there it is right here. This is money coming out of the checking account. And when I go over to the credit card account, you're going to see the same amount going into the credit card account. And do you see here, they just actually added this last week. They still make this look paired to another transaction. So even, even though we've not entered the payment at all, it came down twice, once on the bank account side, once on the credit card side. And now what you'll do is you'll simply add one. So I'll go ahead and just add this one on the credit card side. And when I go over to the uh, bank account side, it, it, let me click here, one for review. Oh, wow. It looks like it added it from the bank side too. Let me refresh this and see if it's still, that one is still there. Nope. It's all good now. Okay. So what I want to show you before we move on to the credit card is that because I downloaded, see, there's nothing left in here now. Everything's, of course, there's 211 here and 38 here, but there's nothing left here, okay? One thing I do want to say, these numbers, this represent how, represents how much the bank thinks we have. This is how much is in QuickBooks. And notice how it's different amounts. That's going to happen. That's normal. Because if you've been entering checks and they hadn't cleared yet, They'll be reducing the QuickBooks balance, but the bank doesn't know about them yet. So you, this is very common. These numbers will appear in your dashboard as well. Over here. And you'll see, look, it's the same numbers over here. And people get upset because these aren't equal, but they shouldn't be equal. Okay. Unless everything that you've entered is cleared. Okay. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reconcile the bank account. 
People think that if you download transactions, you don't have to reconcile, but you do have to reconcile, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and click it, and I'm gonna click reconcile right there. I'm gonna click the bank account I wanna reconcile. So this is after the bank statement comes in, okay? And let's see, uh, let me, you know what? I was in the middle of playing with this before let me. Okay, so now I'm gonna reconcile the bank account. I'm gonna put the ending balance off the bank statement, 494-09577. But as you might imagine, reconciling is becoming, is gonna become real easy because you've kind of done a reconciliation and this is how quick it is. When I click reconcile, everything that was either added or matched from a download will already be checked. And if you notice the difference is zero, I'm finished with my bank rec, guys. I'm done. I click finish now and I'm finished. That's how easy it is. That's the, one of the big things about reconciling. Isn't that kind of cool? It's amazing. All right, so let's do the credit cards. And at the same time we do the credit cards, I'm gonna do the rules for you, okay? But I'm gonna take a little sip of water here, hold on. So Anne says it doesn't work that way in our version and it absolutely does. Um, I don't know why that, what version do you have, Ann? I've, I've, it always works. So I don't understand that can't be right, Ann. Um, all right, Paige, is there something before we get into the credit cards, is there something that you feel like we need to tell everybody? I am not seeing anything you haven't already covered or aren't covering now. There's been a couple questions coming in about matching payroll, but that might be a little more involved than you want to do now, like about using a journal entry and matching it, but that seems to be it for the moment. Okay, well, we'll, we'll cover the payroll thing in a second. Sandra wants to know if we can do a seminar on uploading receipts, uh, and we did one on that. I think we did it for TechSoup. So, Aretha, um, why don't you maybe look up that link? Remember when we did the, like, what's new webinar? Yeah, we talked about. Yeah, we talked about uploading receipts there, Sandra. All right, so to add a credit card, it's the same way as doing a bank account. We click connect accounts. We put the name of our credit card of uh, the bank. Um, I'm going to do American Express, but if it's Visa or MasterCard, you'd pick the bank. This won't take near as long, by the way. People get scared about credit cards here. I'm going to link this. Um, let's see, this is the, which account do you want to connect? Uh, and these also, this is my credit card and then um, I'm going to connect it here and then I'll click connect and then it's going to download the transactions. Okay. And again, they're not in the uh, QuickBooks file yet. And what it's going to download, it's going to download all the individual charges and it's also going to download the payments. We already kind of saw that. So it's downloading transactions right now. Uh, let's see, it's bringing in the transactions and okay, cool. Okay. So we're ready to go. All right. It brought in 100, 105, but I'm going to go to this one right here. And when it comes to credit cards, it's going to bring in all the charges and then it's going to bring in any payments, okay? Be very careful with the payments because if this payment, it should also, the other side of it should also be in the bank account. So uh, you should see it twice and um, it shouldn't enter twice. You should see it twice, but it shouldn't enter twice. Now notice what I've done here. I've basically just sorted it by description again. And it's really great for credit cards because I can easily see here's Comcast. I'm going to go ahead and click on that one. Uh, that goes for utilities. I wonder if I have one for internet. I have gas, electric, and water. I'm going to create one for internet. Internet fees. Comcast is such a easy, comfortable, 
a fun company to call when you have problems with your internet, isn't it? Isn't it just wonderful? I'd like to spend every day, all day on the phone with uh, Comcast technical support. That is that would that would be the life for me. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put this to admin, and I'm going to click add. There we go. And then look, the other one has been changed. And when I go to click this one, this is when it wants to create a rule. Okay. How do you unread? Okay. If it was inadvertently added, how do you unadd it? Okay. Well, let me just finish with this rule here. Um, this time, I'm going to go ahead and click the all. I always make sure that says um, that's unchecked. I have to put Comcast in here. Comcast. I thought I had them as a vendor. Maybe I forgot to put them in there. All right. This is a vendor. All right, there we go. And then I'm going to create the rule. There we go. So uh, I think we're so we added that other one and we created the rule. So now we have a rule, and the rules are over here in a place called rules. And here it is right there. Okay. So if you don't like your rules, we're going to screw with the rules in a second. But the rules are there to kind of help make things easier. Now somebody wanted to unadd it. Okay. So I'm going to go over to where this says categorized. These are the ones that have been added. So I'm going to click them. Here's my Comcast right there. And I have to unadd it. Okay. So you see this undo, you click it and it lets you undo it. And when it lets you undo it, then you'll go back and it'll be back here ready to add it later. Okay. Let me click on this. There it is. Okay, so Comcast, one of those Comcast should be back now. Yeah, there it is. But it tells you there's a rule for it. All right. So anyway, uh, I want to talk about the rules. Okay, so let me spend a second on this. QuickBooks, obviously, you see, tries to suggest things, but who knows whether they're right or wrong. Okay, and a lot of times they're wrong. So I'm going to concentrate on, let's do Chevron. Okay, so that's a gas station. Okay, so let's assume that um, Chevron, yes, I, I, it's putting it to utilities gas, but it shouldn't go there. It should go to like auto and travel or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and create a rule for this. But to create the rule, you see this thing says rules right there. I'm going to go ahead and click it. And I'm going to create a rule. So I'm going to click new rule. I'm going to name the rule Chevron. Now, that doesn't mean that whenever it sees Chevron on a description, it's going to assume this rule applies. This is just the name of it. OK, I'll just call it my Chevron rule. OK, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say apply this to all transactions where money's going out of any bank account, including the credit card account, whenever you see a payment coming out where the description, this is what you want to do, description contains, and then I'm going to put Chevron, please point it to, make it an expense type transaction, and point it to auto, um, I'll call it auto expense. I'll just create it on the fly here. And uh, this is an expense account. And save and close. Now, uh, the payee is going to be Chevron. There we go. And now the other thing is I want to be able to put it to a class, but I'm not seeing class as an option here. I'm going to click this add a split right there. And when you click add a split, as a matter of fact, let me close that again so I can do it again. Um, how can I? Well, all right, I'll do it in a second. Now I can add a class, but I can also split it. So look at this. I want 50% of it. Actually, we'll make 30% of it to go to auto expense for the guidance center. 
I want another 20% of it to 20% of it to go to auto expense, but for a different program. Okay, we're going to do it based on history. I, you know, decided I want some of it to go to the Synergy Conference. I'm going to click Add a Line, and then I'm going to put the rest of it. We'll say the other 50% of it. We're going to put to auto expense for admin. So if you have expenses like utilities or rent, um, things that should be split between different programs, then uh, no, you don't need to uh, entries if it's to different grants. Um, I'll sh you can't use rules, but I'll talk about that in a second, Desmond. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and click save. And now I've created that rule. Let me edit that rule real quick and make sure that oh, good. The auto ad is not on. Okay, great. So I'm going to go back over to my banking where these transactions are. And now you will see the chevrons have been split. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and I'm going to edit the split and you'll see that it did the math for me. Okay. Half of it or 2813. Is that half? It is. Okay. Went to admin. 11 and 16. Okay. They got split between the guidance center and the synergy conference. And now before you add it, uh, Anne, uh, not Anne, uh, let's see. Anne, did you come in late? We're not doing desktop. This is the online edition. Anne. You must have come in late. We're do this is the online edition. This is a webinar for people using the online edition. Desmond, you can put the grants in here if they're split between different grants. You can put the grants in right here. Okay. So then I'm going to apply and accept that one. Okay. So isn't that kind of cool though? I'm going to go ahead and just check these four and click accept. So these rules will result in you taking five minutes to do what used to take five hours, because it's definitely uh, going to help you. If you don't like your rules or they're screwing you up, go into rules right here, and you can adjust the rules right here. You can edit a rule, you can delete the rule, you can disable the rule, all kinds of things, all right, that you can do with the rules, okay? So, um, Let's see, we've only got a few minutes left. What's an NPO? An NPO is a nonprofit organization, nonprofit organization, okay? That's cute. Uh, let's see. All right, looks like, okay, I think we're good. All right, so what I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna tell you about something. If you are interested, in learning how to track restricted grants, okay? Um, I'm gonna go to quickbooksmadeeasy.com. If you're interested in tracking restricted grants, if you go to QuickBooks Made Easy and you go to webinars, we have a webinar coming up next week, December the 8th, for those of you with the desktop version of QuickBooks to learn how to track restricted grants. And on December the 9th, and that's where the majority of you would wanna to go to the online edition. And we're gonna teach you how to track restricted grants, including entering budgets, including uh, doing reimbursed grants, uh, including how it interacts with the downloaded bank feeds. All of that we're doing with an organization called GrantStation. It's only $89, you can click on it to sign up for it here. Um, the other thing that I need to tell you about is 1099s, okay? How many of you have independent contractors that you pay money to? Put it in the chat here. Do you have 1099s? So we're in December, folks. January is 1099 season, all right? So January, we've got a couple of events going on. Um, we are going to do a free uh, 1099 webinar uh, for TechSoup. And Aretha, do you know what day that is yet? Is Did we decide on the 12th? Yes, it is the 12th. The 12th. And I don't know if it's up on your site yet, no, but sign up for that. We're going to be talking all about 
how to um, when people get 1099s, how to fill out the W-9, what it means, who should get it, how much it should be, all kinds of rules around 1099s. Then the following, oh, it's January the 12th, that's right. Then the following week, January the 18th and January the 19th, we're going to show you, we're going to walk you step by step how to get your 1099s out of QuickBooks, okay? So most of you are in the online edition, so you'll want to do this one. It is $89 as well, but what we're going to do is we're going to give you $40 off. Let me give you the coupon for it. And this is, it. you have until Saturday to sign up for this thing. Um, there it is, okay? So when you sign up for the paid webinar, not the free one, but this one is paid. This is the one where we walk you through how to do it in QuickBooks. The code is TS1099. It's $89 normally. We're going to give you $40 off. So it's only 49 bucks. Okay. To sign up for it, you go to QuickBooks Made Easy. And you'll probably, most of you are in line. You'll probably click right here. And you'll buy a ticket. It's only not, it's only $89, but for you at checkout, it's only $49 as long as you put this coupon in. Okay. Which is TS1099. Okay. If you're interested in the restricted grants webinar, uh, again, you can sign up for that. That's $89. All right. And I think that's all I have. Um, and I guess what I want to do is. Paige, did you want to, are there any other questions that people have before we send them on their way? Or things that you wanted I, me to talk about? No, I think you've got it now. Okay. All right. So one more word from everybody. How do you feel about this? Did you learn? How do you feel about this? Tell me how you felt. Uh, if you felt like this was good. Cool. You, so I really want you to try it. I really want you to try this. Um, it's going to save you an incredible amount of time. All right. Cool. All right. Great. All right. So Aretha, I will let you finish this out. That was awesome. That's a lot of work, Greg. So thank mm -hmm. you for you and your entire team for all that you do for TechSoup. And thank everybody else for being here. You'll get the recording within 48 hours. And you guys take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.